What's going on YouTube? It's Baraga Bam here with D Raga. We are reacting to the dark story of King Von and KI. Cool. Do you remember who, who KI is, yeah? No clue. That girl man. Well oh. <laughs> the one you try to smash. Yeah. <laughs> well the word on curve you try to smash, yeah, but obviously yeah. this is gonna go cool. into it. Yeah. Like I've seen you lot be spamming this in the comments like Bam, why haven't you done this? So obviously Yeah, we're doing it now also. And I love reacting to American music, especially with these lot, because this is what I With music or is it what? No, like all of these people, yeah, I knew who they was before I started YouTube. Mm. I knew I knew who they was from like. Do you knew Kim Bon was? Fifteen, yeah. yeah. Four guys in prison. Years ago, from, like, well, I didn't. I didn't know. I knew his name and I knew him visually. Oh. For many years, I've like these little twig ass dreadlocks. <laughs> yeah, literally. From, that's what I'm saying. From, I used to bang these guys out. But you lot, we're gonna get into the story. Eh? Party, I snuck a night up in that party. I just fucking bought the party. I bought the weed and the stinky cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On September 25th, 2012, King Vaughn, a member of O Block, would encounter a rival Southside Chicago gang member by the name of KI on a local train ride. That's it. KI is a member of STL. What, what, was he, what was he on then? St. <laughs> Lawrence. A still street alive? in which He's most. dead. Oh, crap. KI is a member of STL, which stands for St. Lawrence, a street in which most STL gang members reside on. STL and Oblock have had a strong hatred for each other for years, and the rivalry between the two gangs has resulted in many casualties. When King Vaughn and KI spotted each other on the train, the two immediately began to get physical, with King Vaughn landing several punches to KI's face. <laughs> After the incident, King Vaughn logged onto Twitter and tweeted about the altercation with KI, claiming that an opposing gang member got caught with their guard down on the train. KI would then begin to tweet about the situation herself by saying that her ear and arm are messed up. KI followed that tweet by also saying that she only has a bruise on her face and that she's not tripping because her 40 caliber firearm would put a hole in King Vaughn's face. Man said, yeah, you beat me up, but my gun was smoky. Yeah. That's literally what she said. There's no nicer way to put it. But fam, and that's what's mad, like these Americans, yeah, they actually have like chats. Like, yeah, you see when I see you, it's on time. Like the UK, we don't do that. Yeah. Just when we see you, we see you. Like in the UK, you don't even know you're beefing, you're just beefing. Yeah. These are it's just on top of Like, why are you wearing it, black? Bro, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> like, <laughs> still running after you, like, oh, I'm. <laughs> oh, I don't even know you're my up, you know, I don't even lie, bro. Like, what the mm -hmm. flip, bro? This situation stemming from the altercation on the train would soon become the start of King Vaughn and KI frequently communicating with each other on social media. Just four days after the train incident, KI would tweet, tweet, retweet if you think I look good, in which King Vaughn would retweet shortly after. Three days later, <laughs> <laughs> like these men got some bravery yeah, and that is like, I said, it's like Batman and Joker. You see, there's been a time where Batman. Is about to die and Joker saved him. Yeah, just started, like, you can't kill him, but only I can kill him. Yeah, yeah. That's literally what it's like. KI would get into another altercation on the train, but this time with Lil Scud, an O Block member. Why is he on a train? King Von. KI was eager to let this be known and quickly tweeted out that she beat up Lil Scud and to let King Von know that she isn't someone to be messed mums. with. She actually, got, she actually got wrapped up. Yeah. Damn. 30 minutes of no replies, KI would tweet directly at King Vaughn explaining how she beat up Lil Scud all by herself and that he didn't even get one punch on her. King uh, Vaughn would eventually reply stating that KI is about that life and that he may be in love with her. <laughs> KI would respond to this by calling King Vaughn gay. Vaughn clearly didn't appreciate that. She takes a picture nah, bro, and in that hell, picture is this he tweet here. her. He puts the camera over, over in that door. And told KI not to do that, and ended the conversation by saying he would treat KI right. King Vaughn would soon begin to direct message KI on Twitter with his first DM being, What up? I'm trying to change you and upgrade you. I want to nail something. What's up? <laughs> KI yeah, would appear to be somewhat shocked by these DMs, but King Vaughn would respond the next day, saying that it wasn't him who sent the first message, and then goes on to say that he likes KI for real, and that when the gang war in Chicago is over with, that he is going to be with her. KI would then go on to tell King Vaughn that she heard a rumor in the streets that Oblock is trying to kill her. King Vaughn would respond to those claims, stating that what she heard was true, but he doesn't think he could do it because he thinks she's actually cool. The 
Is that like Romeo and Juliet? <laughs> oh, one Romeo and Juliet. Is that Bonnie and Clyde firm if they got together? Yeah, yeah, never, never. That would be peak. You then discuss when they are going to stop gang banging, to which they both reveal they believe that they are both going to die in the gang war. K.I. then goes on to say that she thinks Oblock feels threatened by her, to which King Vaughn would respond with, Look, I'm not trying to mess with you, so why are you trying to mess with me? We are just trying to get whoever. It's not like we are in a rush to get you, but I had a 9mm on me when I saw you riding my bike and was going to grab you, but the police were right there. The girl with me also had a 7mm when we saw you on the train. If we were really trying to get you, I would have took my chances then. K.I. soon responds by shouting out STL and states that she is ready to go to war with anybody. Vaughn then tells her that she doesn't always have to act tough, to which K.I. says, treat enemies like enemies. What do you expect? The next morning, K.I. would start off the day by dissing Odie Perry, a respected member of Wick City who was fatally shot just a few years prior. King Vaughn would see this tweet and respond with, See, that's why you keep getting beat up. K.I. then tells King Vaughn to pull up, to which he responds with, I should have pissed or spit on you after I beat you up, but I wasn't thinking. K.I. proceeds to laugh at this and tells King Vaughn to leave it in the streets. Shortly after this Twitter interaction, King Vaughn would go outside looking for K.I. and ended up running into a group of rival gang members at the local corner store. According to King Vaughn, the rival members were scared of him and had the store employees lock the door to keep him out. Vaughn would tweet about this as soon as it happened, to which K.I. would respond by saying she is on her way. King Vaughn would quickly tell her not to come since he was already leaving the store anyways. K.I. responds by calling Vaughn funny and says she'll come to wherever he is at, which Vaughn responds by telling K.I. to be smart. Four days later, King Vaughn and K.I. would continue talking in the DMs after K.I. would message Vaughn with, Where are you at? Come up. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me this ain't like a movie? It's like it's like superheroes and super villains. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I I told him yeah, like when the camera caught it. Yeah, I told him I used to watch these people because of DJ Academics here, yeah, and I felt in my heart it was a cartoon. Yeah, even though it's real life. But as I got older, I'm thinking like deep that like, people are actually using their li not in a funny way, but people are actually using their lives. And then there's us. Well, then there was me, all the way across the sea. Just watching it like it's TV, bro. But these man was actually living like life or death. Look okay, at but that, like they, they just said, yeah, I don't know how I feel you, you know. But like I was still gonna have to beef, like it's, <laughs> your son's it's brazy. Outside, Vaughn would quickly respond to Ki with a simple "Don't mess with me." To which Ki would reply back, taking a slight dig at Oblock and the work they're doing in the streets. King Vaughn would then ask K.I. if she wants to have a shootout with him, to which K.I. would shockingly respond with, Hell yeah, you and your friend T-Roy. King Vaughn didn't seem to take this very seriously and responded back with, Hashtag very scary. K.I. then states that she was just around Oblock and didn't see anybody outside. Vaughn would soon reply saying that they're busy with other things, but that- Ma said we're gonna throw some grenades. Do you know it's not funny about that yet? They've actually got it because Flippin' Rondo had a flipping rocket launcher, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so dumb, man. Why is it their They actually haven't. How do you think it's getting a hold of these, fam? Like, they got a full on war going on, bro. Literally, the war in Chirac. Literally. That they will see them soon. K.I. would then tell King Vaughn that she thinks they are scared of them, to which King Vaughn replies with a simple, ha. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation would then go dark for three days until King Vaughn would randomly message K.I. saying, What's up? When are you going to let your hair down and put on a tight dress for me? I would risk my life to get some of that. Oh, K.I. did not respond to this message. After that message, He's the two didn't him. speak to each other for about a week. But then on October 24th, 2012, K.I. would announce on Twitter that she would be going to Swisher Suites, a popular store located in Oblock territory. King Vaughn would reply to this tweet moments later saying, Don't do that. Today is not the day. K.I. would then respond by saying that she never even sees King Vaughn despite the fact that she's always outside. Vaughn would then say, I saw you before, right or wrong. K.I. would respond with, Yeah, but ever since then I feel like you've been hiding because I've been coming through your territory ever since. King Vaughn replies with, I've been going to Rhodes, but I think when you come over here, I be over here. K.I. ends the conversation with a simple LOL. Two days later, K.I. would suddenly post a tweet stating that King Vaughn was a goofy who got beat up by her friend FBG Butta just two years prior. K. 
King Vaughn would see this tweet and soon reply back saying, and you know the other stuff I did to you guys, right? To which KI would say, you think you're drilling but you need practice. King Vaughn fires back by denying that he needs drilling practice in which KI responds- That is, um, that is Pirico's ball. You think you're drilling but you need practice. That was Pirico and Little Mister's ball. I have no idea you're talking. Guys, we're just, just seeing names, we're just seeing that, we're just seeing literally flipping random names to me, like, they can yeah, be, to you, but they can be saying, fiction for what I know, bro. I see you need practice, and don't you? By saying, Vaughn is saying. So wait, overall, what do you think about this so far? Yeah, this is dumb, I didn't give them. It's like they're flirting. <laughs> it's like they're flirting, but it's flirting like, to kill each other, really. It's yeah. toxic flirt. more than toxic flirting, it's death threats flirting from, like, if police was to give their verdict on it or the judge or whatever, they'll be like, this is a messed up relationship. Yeah. Too, too much for Twitter and that Vaughn's friend Sheroid, an old block member who was fatally shot a few months prior, knows about her. King Vaughn then laughs at KI for saying on GD, then proceeds to tell her that she can ask her dead friends about him. Three days later, KI would tweet at King Vaughn saying, I want to meet King Vaughn face to face, in which Vaughn would respond with, LOL, you don't really want that, Kira. KI would then respond with, see, you don't think I'm tough. Four days later, KI would once again tweet at King Vaughn, saying that she hopes people in Oblock don't actually call Vaughn King Vaughn, and that it's suspect if you do. King Vaughn would respond back by claiming that he earned the name King Vaughn. KI responds by bringing up the fact that Vaughn used to get beat up back in the day. Vaughn replied back laughing at the fact that K.I. was even talking about getting beat up and that if it wasn't for guns, he would be walking up and down their block all day. That's what, and that bit's mad. Do you know why? Because look, he's saying if it wasn't for guns, he'd be patterned. Yeah, and the one time he goes to fight fist to fist, he gets killed. Yeah. That's what's crazy as well. That's what it's crazy that he said, oh, well, just we're both going to die. Yeah, they're both dead for him. It's crazy. Bonnie and Clyde, for real. Six days later, King Vaughn would make a tweet about K.I. saying that she sounds good on the phone. <laughs> this would indicate that King Vaughn and K.I. physically talked on the phone with each other and didn't just message each other back and forth on social media. Okay, Vaughn would that. also make a tweet several hours later complaining that K.I. hasn't answered her phone all day. King Vaughn would eventually get arrested on November 20th, 2012 for unlawful use of a weapon by a felon. This arrest led to King Vaughn sitting behind bars for over a year. While behind bars, King Vaughn's sister, Kayla B, tweeted at K.I. telling her that Vaughn misses her and that she should go and visit him in jail. K.I. responded with LOL, but Kayla B followed up insisting that her brother King Vaughn really wanted to see her. On February 11, 2014, King Vaughn was released from jail, and one of the first things he did following his release was tweet to K.I. saying, What's up? You don't miss me? K.I. would quickly respond with, What's up? When are we linking up? King Vaughn would then respond by asking why she never came and visited him in jail after allegedly saying she would. That's mad. Like, why would you want to... That's what I'm saying, like... All jokes aside, yeah, they wanted to kill each other. But clearly there was something there to visit yeah, your sure. homies in bin, like your your op in bin. Like I know niggas don't even I know niggas that don't go visit their own homies. Yeah. Their own niggas in bin. So why would a op come visit you? It's kinda of messed the word. So crazy. KI would not reply directly to this tweet, but moments later tweeted, How does it feel to lose your friend while behind bars? Referring to the death of Jay Money, one of the top members of Oblock who was fatally I'm shot during Vaughn's incarceration. Years. King Vaughn wouldn't say anything about the tweet, but would later tweet R.I.P. J Money in honor of him. K.I. would soon retweet this as a way of taunting him, to which King Vaughn would quickly compose a tweet discussing Crack and Modell, two STL gang members who unfortunately passed away. While all of this was going on, Oblock was already making plans to avenge J Money after word got out that an STL gang member by the name of Lil B was allegedly responsible for the death of J Money. Oblock was ready for Lil B, but before they could meet face to face, Lil B was fatally shot by the Chicago Police Department in March of 2014 after reportedly pointing a gun at one of the officers. This means... In America, what's the point of pointing a the gun? They're going to shoot you in your... <laughs> like, every... Hey, like what every, do you thinking? Like, like, every incident I've heard, yeah, with a police officer killing, like, an, a you, it's just always them pointing at the police. It's never them shooting at the police. So more time, just pass it at them, they're going to try to kill you anyway. ...that Oblock would not be able to avenge one of their top members and were now looking for the next best thing. 
On April 10, 2014, KI would release a series of tweets regarding her future. The tweets state, I do what I do because I know God has a day for me. You're nobody until someone kills you. That's just real. I've seen too many of my friends in a casket. Less than 24 hours after posting those tweets online, KI and several others were standing outside of a home on the 6400 block of South Eberhardt when a man exited the passenger side of a blue Oldsmobile that was parked facing eastbound on the corner of 65th and Eberhardt. The man proceeded to walk northbound on Eberhardt and quickly began shooting at the group of people standing in front of the house. The suspect would then retreat back to the getaway vehicle and flee the scene going eastbound on 65th Street. Three individuals were hit during the situation and were immediately rushed to nearby hospitals. The first victim was an unidentified male who got shot in his right foot and survived his injuries. The second victim was rumored to be FBG Butta, the same individual that KI claimed to have beaten up King Vaughn in the past. Butta was shot in the right knee and also survived his injuries. The third and final victim was shot seven times and passed away from their injuries during surgery at the hospital. That individual was KI. Detectives would arrive to the crime scene shortly after and began to interview anyone who saw what happened. While there were many witnesses on scene, most of them provided detectives with vague details about the case with some of them even admitting that they are scared to cooperate. However, certain witnesses gave the detectives a similar story, stating that a man wearing dark colored clothing approached the house and began to open fire while yelling things at them. These witnesses would also give detectives a name of someone who they think may have committed the crime, a name in which the Chicago Police Department were already quite familiar with. Over the next couple of days, authorities would continue to investigate the homicide of K.I. and eventually developed a photo spread of potential suspects. Witnesses were soon called in to view the photo spread and almost all of them were quick to point out the same suspect whose name was given to detectives on the day of the crime. Then on April 29, 2014, just 18 days after the murder of K.I., Davon Bennett aka King Vaughn was taken into custody by Officer Fernandez of the Chicago Police Department's Fugitive Apprehension Unit to be interviewed by detectives. At around 1 p.m., King Vaughn was placed in an interview room where two detectives began to question him about the man said King Von Kilda. Because even so, bad people say no he didn't. But FBG Bar himself has said it was it was King Von and you can't not not believe him really. Yeah, I can't mean it's like it's a gun one, seen it. One, he was shot by him too, because he was there. Two, that's his sister. Oh, all kind of sisters. Yeah. Right, right, siblings. Yeah. Yeah. About his involvement in KI's murder. Vaughn would quickly deny all involvement and stated that he doesn't even know K.I. and never goes around 65th Street. The no K. I. even asked they... Vaughn if he would be willing to do a polygraph examination to which he would agree to do and was given food and water. While this interview was taking place, four cooperating witnesses were called in so they could view an in-person lineup of the suspects. The first witness to view the lineup told authorities that they were unable to identify the suspect while the second witness pointed to King Vaughn and said it could possibly be the suspect but wasn't sure. The third witness couldn't make an identification but verbally told detectives it was King Vaughn. The fourth and final witness viewed the lineup and pointed directly to King Vaughn. Two assistant state attorneys would then arrive shortly after and began to review all the evidence in the K.I. case. Detectives would then go back to the interview room to check King Vaughn, where Vaughn would begin to tell detectives that he changed his mind and will no longer do a polygraph exam. King Vaughn then starts giving detectives an alibi, claiming that he checked in at his parole office on the day of K.I.'s death. Detectives immediately started looking into Vaughn's alibi and was able to confirm that he did in fact check in at his parole office, but there was still 30 minutes of unexplained time where he could have still committed the crime. Then on April 30th, 2014, the Cook County State Attorney's Office would announce that they are declining to prosecute King Vaughn for the murder of K.I. due to inconsistencies in the witness statements. This would mean that internally this case is solved according to the Chicago Police Department, but to the public this case is still unsolved with the suspect still at large. King Vaughn was then released from police custody around 6.30 p.m. that same night. Less than two hours later, King Vaughn would tweet, I'm so happy and grateful. I'm too real for this. King Vaughn would then go on and get arrested for another murder less than three months later. He sat in the Cook County Jail for over three years while awaiting trial. During the trial, three King Vaughn was acquitted of all charges due to lack of evidence and was released back into the free world. Yeah, After yeah, being released, yeah, yeah. lifelong <laughs> friend and rapper Lil Durk would take King Vaughn under his wing and attempt to turn him into a gangster rap superstar. 
Within a matter of months, King Von would become one of the top street rappers in the music industry, with his music surpassing tens of millions of streams each month, and even received co-signs from A-list celebrities such as NBA star LeBron James. Then, on November 6, 2020, King Von's iconic music career would be cut short after he was fatally shot in Atlanta during an altercation with another rapper. King Von was 26 years old at the time. Stay yeah, on the streets. No cap. No cap. No cap. Oh, shit. So what do you think about that? Yeah, just see, I don't know what the hell the relationship was. Damn. I'm not gonna lie, man. They should've got together, bro. Shut if they got together, that would've been crazy, dude. Right. Deep it. It would have made, it would have made history like a like gang place. You know there would definitely be Bonnie and Clyde, bro. Yeah, but there'll be Bonnie and Clyde's of our generation. It's be toxic. They're from two different gangs. It's gonna start a lot of things, mate. They're like, like the main people from what? each gang. <laughs> no, that's actually crazy. From like, like I know, like, like even though he might have done it, yeah, um, he he was pretty upset that she that she's gone because she's the only op that entertained him <laughs> to that level like you can clearly see those entertaining each other like, yeah for sure like he pretty comes home and like yeah let me just check what she's saying bro like, like that was, so like, that like, was the vibe like, each other, like, so. because even like there was it wasn't even like one or two replies a day it was multiple replies a day yeah yeah and that's the shit we come out of prison the first thing he tweeted like like what's up yeah, it's like, I'm back, baby. <laughs> like, literally, bro. Like, that's funny. Simping, simping. That's what he is. Simping at the finest, still. Mom. He's doing it up, still. But listen, you know, it's been Bam and Bam with the Wagon reacting to the dark story of King Von and KI. And we're out. Peace. Back out. Slap it out. Short, but I bang it like Pacquiao. Man just, man just ping it or ching it. If I ain't did it, I still bring back it out. Cryo's probably hit squad, baby. Hit squad crazy. Rip man's.